Hi, I'm Dan. Coming up tonight, see how wind generators are changing the world. Plus, the absolute ultimate in computer gaming systems. And we've scoured the Sunday paper, the best tech ads. Live from the Tech TV studios in San Francisco, it's Great Savers! Welcome to the Screensavers. I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm Leo Laporte. Welcome mm -hmm. to our Geek Freak Show. Yes, we're saving the planet here on the Screensavers, one computer at a time. However, this week, this week especially, one computer at a time. Because we're gonna help <laughs> we're gonna help the planet because it's help the planet week help the planet on Tech week. TV. Help the planet. You know why? Because it's good to hug trees. Tomorrow is Earth Day. Uh, All animals, trees, ocean. Everything in nature is influenced by technology. Look at the little ferrets. Actually, oh. I think those are meerkats. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're oh, lemurs? Sorry, lemurs. I apologize. We should, you know, Allison, our, uh, one of our producers, is an expert on uh, flora and fauna of uh, the Oceana area. Yes. We'll be exp <laughs> I'm sorry. No, can we start the show over? Please. Take, take two. Take two. Tonight, you know what? We got tech news. We got the real deal. We got a win thing. We got something about generating go sound. We got a win thing. Hey, you should stick around for the win thing. But in the meantime, big stories. You know, these uh, the, the, a number of states have already started these, what right. they call a baby DMCAs, where the state is trying to go in business for itself, supporting the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, usually with extensions that are really, really bad. The lingo is super DMCA. Oh, now, see, they want you to tell us about the Opterons Ah, first. we'll tell them about the Opterons Can I do the super DMCA first? Do the first? super DMCA, because this is, once again, your rights being picked and poked it, away. It makes me mad. Yeah. Tomorrow, Tennessee's Senate Judiciary Committee, uh, this is according to Slashdot, is going to hold a hearing on uh, uh, SB 213, and HB 457, Tennessee and Arkansas, those are right. two different bills. Uh, uh, well, one's basically, it's the Motion Picture Association of America is getting to these right. small state legislatures and saying, we need help protecting movies. And everyone loves movies. Here's the thing. In the state of Massachusetts, only, it only took 20 protesters to show up and discuss some of the issues they had. But the super DMCA knocked the bill out of the legislature. It's up in the state of Tennessee in the legislature. It has already been passed by the legislature in Arkansas, but you can still fax, write, or email the governor of Arkansas to try to prevent nope. this from being signed into law. What is it that this one is going to, is proposing? Because the, 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 uh, the Massachusetts one was just really terrible. Right. I mean, it basically made it impossible well, to copy movies. Well, here's the thing movies. is, essentially, is, you know, legislatures, just like the folks that got the DMCA hammered through on a federal level, are introducing, the MPAA primarily is introducing more of laws and extending the laws inside of individual states. So I highly recommend, look, if you live in Tennessee or Arkansas, go to slashdot.org now, scroll down, read this link, and basically, if you don't you like You could be one of the 20 people that, over, that turn it over. Or if nothing else, contract your local representatives, you know, fax Fight or letters, thing. phone calls, all count a little bit more than, than Fight email. This thing. Absolutely. But definitely fight for your rights. Now we can talk about the good news. That's the Opteron. That's the Opteron. It's coming out when? Tomorrow? Tomorrow. It's like a nutty, nutty week. Think about buying a new system. Pay attention because it's a big week for processors. This is a great processor. Well, first off, AMD's, well, I'm waiting to see the benchmarks. AMD's long-awaited Opteron is set to finally launch tomorrow. 64-bit processor. I'm getting to that. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Second, Intel fixed the glitch that delayed the launch of the 3 gigahertz Pentium 4. That's the 800 megahertz one, the new one formerly known as Canterwood, and they dropped the price on the existing ones. They dropped the price on all of the 3 gigahertz processors yeah. by 30%. Because they're hoping that what just happened here will happen everywhere. Exactly. People will say the Opteron's coming up, but by the way, the right. P4 is out and it's dropping the price Have and they'll forget the Opteron. Have you seen benchmarks on the Opteron no, running 32-bit code? The 32-bit code? That's the, the issue because we don't have 64-bit windows yet. Now. Is it time to buy? Well, rumor has it Intel will introduce a 3.2 gigahertz Pentium 4 using that new chipset in the next month, which means prices will be dropping again. And the Opteron, we want to see the 64-bit processor that promises compatibility with 32-bit code. We want to see the benchmarks because it's going to be a lot less expensive, and it basically 
operating system application portability is much, much easier, we've been told, than Intel's Itanium. Yeah, unlike the Itanium, which runs yeah. basically 32-bit x86 architectures and emulation, this, na this is still an x86 architecture processor. Right. So even though it's 64-bit data path, 64-bit memory addressing, it still runs your old instructions. So in theory, and again, in theory, you've got to see the numbers, it should do a very, very good job with existing code Unlike mm -hmm. the Itanium, which is really designed for 64-bit code. Right. Yeah. In theory, both tomorrow. Of them are, yeah. Now, do, now, you, see, we have we have division of labor here. I don't like to know. I don't sign non-disclosure agreements. Mm -hmm. I don't like to know anything in advance because I can't. Frankly, I'm a loud mouth, and I'll just tell everybody. It's true. I can't be trusted. Yeah. But Patrick can be trusted, so he signs the non-disclosure agreement, so I don't have to. Right. So he can see all this stuff. Now I can't technically ask you if we have an Opteron in the lab, and I won't even answer you if you do. So is but that a yes or a no? That, do I we don't. have an Opteron in the lab? I don't know. Robert we Heron, might. do we have an Opteron in don't the lab? Don't look at Robert. <laughs> None of these guys will tell me nothing. That's because we've seen what happens when we do. None of these guys. I hate that. All right, so we may or may not have one. Yeah. There was a, a, one of the tech sites had a, a, a review of the Opteron, yeah. some, but, but who knows, you know. There's so much potential. I've got to be honest with you. If you want to spend the big bucks, you want to max out, you know, you want to get the ultimate PC, don't buy one today. We'll have the benchmarks for you tomorrow, yeah. right, Patrick? Who knows? Oh, I hate that. <laughs> later, in the, geez, later in the show, Robert Heron will be here to talk about yeah. something. Some very cool PC. Something I, we can talk about. We get a roundup of like the ultimate gaming PCs Where we can you find. See this? Where do you see this Alienware? Yeah, these it looks like systems. a 49 DeSoto. It's incredible. <laughs> it's ridiculous is it's, what it I is. I love it. These systems range in price from somewhere around $2,500 up to $6,000 wow. in some configurations. Well, we're not going to tell you about the performance. We're going to talk about that later. But yeah. you know what? Let's just... Let's just scroll up and take a look at the cases, because that's what our poll is going to be today. Like the, the, the case, Let's just scroll up to just that take a look question. at those. Take a look at those, because we're going to ask you today which gaming PC not runs best, right. not which one is faster, which one looks hotter. The Alienware Area 51, the Falcon Northwest Mach 5, the Voodoo PC F550. So there you go. The, the, from left to right, you right. have the Alienware, the Falcon, and the Voodoo. Yeah. The Alienware is the green DeSoto. The Falcon is the kind of 60s. You know, kind of New York City architecture. Yeah, it looks like House of Color, the what they call the chameleon color. Yeah, right? and then really the voodoo. Stuff. I don't know what you'd call that. That's a, that's like a H.R. Geiger on steroids. Case mod I don't know nuttiness. what it is. Yeah. yeah. So there's your three choices. Cast your vote at the screensavers.com. It's a shame we were hoping to have a Dell in, but Dell declined. After we benchmarked it and it proved wonderful, Dell uh, Dell's holding off. They didn't want to. Oh, because it's that using that new chip. Right. Well, the new chip, which also point out is the flaws in the in the, the wasn't Cantor the flaw wood. in the chip. It was some issues in the BIOS that have been fixed. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about that later right. on. Let's get to our first call today from Linton, Indiana. Bill, welcome to the Screensavers. Hello, hey, Bill. Hey, how's it going? Hey, right. we're great. How are you? Doing all right. All right. What can we do for you today? Well, in my Internet Explorer, yes. if I go to the view and yeah. I go to toolbars, yeah. I've got an area there that wants to know if I want to add if I want to add adult links. Oh, that's nice. And I don't want <laughs> Wait, that. Did you hear there. that in the background? Somebody in the back of Robert the Robert Herring goes, goes <laughs> right on. Where can I get that? Where did you get that, Bill? I don't know where I got Rob it, but I know where I want to put it. Yeah. Back in the trash can. You oh, picked boy. that up like a fungus, didn't you? <laughs> That's something you got out on the internet. That's the problem with the internet. Be careful. It's very possible, in fact, because of the way Windows and Internet Explorer are designed, for them to install stuff with hardly any notice to you. They are supposed to put up a little message right. that says, we're about to install stuff. But you might think you're downloading a program when, in fact, you're putting Bonzi Buddy on yeah, your tool. Or you may think you're killing one of 27 pop-up windows that how can opened he, up. How can you get rid of that? I'm almost going to say, it's, I'm almost gonna say go straight to a, a spyware removal tool. Yes, search um, and destroy. Spy because I'm pretty sure it's not going to show up in your add remove control I've, panel. Um, I've got search and destroy on my computer. It's just a matter of probably running it then. Yeah, and yeah. figuring out which thing of all the spyware you got on there, which one is the one putting the porno links up. Because i got to be honest with you, some of the nastiest stuff I've seen to try to remove from your system has can, actually been toolbars. Can I use Windows XP's go back feature and go back a week? Uh, Will that remove it? It's not really. You're thinking of go back like the, the system application. Restore. You're talking about System Restore? I don't really use, I've never actually seen System Restore work. <laughs> it could, it would roll back anything yeah. you've done since the and last System Restore point, which may be, done. yeah, which may not, 
it won't not document editing, yeah. but but any system changes. So yeah, that should in theory that should get rid of it. But sure. who knows? You know, this thing has hooks all over this. It, it, it might get rid of it, but there, then there's a little stub that's left behind that says, oh by the way, if the state is gone, reinstall. <gasps> he but, uninstalled me. I'll have to reinstall. Yeah, they do over that over and over. It's really annoying. Patrick's going to show you. You can yeah. remo you know remove toolbar items by unchecking them. So if it's not generous enough to actually have a link in there to the toolbar items you have, you should. That's you can't, where it's at. It's right up there where yours says links and address bar. It added right. it to there. It says adult stuff. So you can uncheck it, but it's still but there. But it's still going to be lurking there. Yeah. Malingering. So waiting for a small child. I think try SpyBot. Yeah, I think that's the best thing. And for people who don't have SpyBot, wonderful free program. It's mm -hmm. kind of ad aware, but it's got a lot more. Yeah. From security.cola, K O L L A dot D E. A very good program. And security. it often Cola pays to run e. both. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Why not? Sometimes one will pick up stuff that the other won't. Belt and suspenders. It's just amazing the kind of stuff that they put on your computer. And you know, they're assuming that you want this stuff. It's like spam. Yeah. I'm doing everything I can to filter spam, and they, but they try to get around my filters. Isn't that like a message I don't want this? They still think I do. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm actually putting together a list of like people I want to meet from different yes. vendors that do the pop-up. The porn toolbar guy. I'd like to meet him. Fonzie buddy. <laughs> Unless it's Martin. Don't go anywhere, folks. Get your hands. Whoa! Get your hands. This is a very special download of the day. <laughs> Get your hands on a power pack gaming PC for the ultimate gaming experience. We'll find out if those cases run as well as they look. And after the break, learn how wind energy converters work and how they're helping people not just here in the United States, but all over the world when the screensavers continue. Well, certainly we've all seen or heard wind generators. Uh, maybe not. If you live in California and have ever driven over the Altamont Pass, you've seen the giant windmills they have up there generating electricity day in and day out. Joining us, Vice President and Co-Founder of Southwest Wind Power, Andy Cruz. He doesn't make the giant ones. He makes something a little bit smaller, something more appropriate maybe for a lot of people. Yep. Welcome, Absolutely. Andy. Good Thank to have you. you. Thank you. This, what is this? This here is what we call the Air Marine. This is a 400-watt wind generator. It's a very small it's wind. It's a small one? Yes. Uh, but 400 watts, what does that mean? Is that how much power it can generate? Um, that's what it's, it's, it's capable of producing. It's really when you want to look at energy, you yeah. want to look at it in kilowatt hours. Right. And how, how many kilowatt hours? Are we this thing here in about a 12 mile an hour average wind speed will produce about 40 to 50 kilowatt hours a month. That's a lot. Yes. Enough to uh, run a household? A um, small really household. small house. These are commonly, you'll find them on cabins, um, remote areas. Boats um, you sell them for, a right? A lot on sailboats. You find them all around uh, the Bay Area. Yeah, if you're going to have a yes. sailboat, you're going to have wind. Absolutely. Of course, okay. you can't use this when the sailboat's going with the wind, right? Because there's That's not right. enough wind. Yeah. You have to stop, <laughs> and then it would then Yeah, it would a turn. lot of times people use these down in the Caribbean where they're anchored in a spot for three or four months, right. and they just use the wind to... Uh, to, to charge the batteries or run their VCRs or whatever they got on the In on real world terms, how, okay, that's important. It charges yes. batteries. Yes. You don't run off the windmill, you run off the batteries that it's charged. Absolutely. But let's say, okay, so you said 12 mile an hour wind. Let's say you have a pretty steady 12 mm -hmm. mile an hour wind. What is that? A couple of lights? A, what? How much can That'll I That'll give you um, two to three lights, depending on what type of lights, of course. Yeah. Compact fluorescence, you can get them a lot more efficient. Right. Um, but it'll do lights, uh, stereo, television. Oh, really? Oh, absolutely. I'll listen to the radio? Right, right. In, Probably in not a stove, not an electric stove. No, no, definitely not that. Uh, yeah, those right. would take a lot of juice. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, now, what's interesting to me, this is presumably state-of-the-art, and yet yes. it's basically the same design as the windmills that the Dutch used hundreds of years ago. Yes. Haven't we come yes. up with any better way of... <laughs> getting wind power? Um, no, I mean, yes, that's where the ideas came from, but these are quite, quite a bit more advanced these because are. these are actually producing power, yeah. electricity rather than grinding corn. Right. But these are... Um, Any other designs that people have tried, or has it always been blade? Oh, there have been blade. so many different designs. You know, we've gone way off um, doing vertical axis designs, right. mono blade designs where just one blade. Right. I've seen um, those, yeah. But, and they've all kind of come back to this typical this design, three blades. Turns out this works. Horizontal axis. It works. It works very well. Now, the t materials are a little more high tech. Yes. And the insides. Yes. What, what are the blades made out of? This here is a carbon fiber composite. It's made with um, a, a combination of long fiber carbon and uh, uh, glass and, and some resin. Like like a tennis so racket. Composite. In, yes, in much way. It's a, it's, a, it's a proprietary composite that we use. But it's very light and strong. Yes. I guess that would be the two things very, very you'd important. look for. What yes. are some of the other issues that you have to consider? I mean, uh, turbulence that's created turbulence, by... Turbulence, and this is, that comes down to siting. You know, you want to always, um, when you're installing wind turbines, put them just like solar panels. You want to 
put them when it's, where it's appropriate. So you want to put them high enough up to get away from the, the, the turbulence the and the trees effect, and so grounds for, yeah, and all that, yes. Yeah. Now inside here, uh, what is generating the electricity? What, basically what you have in, in here is, is, is your standard alternator uh -huh. um, design. We use actually... Just like um, in your car, you mean? Much like, except this is a permanent magnet alternator. It's used, we, we use a, what's, what's called a neodymium iron boron magnet. It's a very powerful magnet. And that's what actually so rotates a, within the stator. A copper wrapping right. around it, exactly. and the, as the magnet mm -hmm. rotates, it generates electricity. Yes. So then you'd have a wire going from here to the that's batteries. Correct. Right. And then inside this here actually has a microprocessor. Oh, really? And it's always looking at, uh, we have a program which it's looking at the, the RPM and it's determining what the wind speed is. And it's optimizing the output based on whatever the wind is. is uh, is doing at that particular time. And why is that? Is it because of the battery, the ways the batteries well, work? Well, it's, it's you want to get optimum efficiency out of the turbine. And, and what you're looking for is, is loading the blades properly, keeping it quiet, but also giving it maximum charge. Right, right. 12 mile an hour wind, that's all yeah, I need, huh? That's all you need. Any yes. more than that is better, or is it? Oh, more and more is better, More is always better. Right, okay. right. And we have a lot of areas where the winds are much higher. Down in Argentina, we've got many installations in that, those regions. So you, you do this all over the world. Oh, absolutely. More, more than half of our business actually goes overseas. In third world nations where they don't yeah. have infrastructure yeah. or that yeah, kind of thing? Yes, so you'll find them a lot in, uh, oh gosh, countries like Mongolia or um, We actually have some pictures of Mongolia, think do, yes. I think, of your work uh, there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, is that a yurt? This here, yeah, this is an installation that was done a couple of years ago. This is probably the most um, popular family in the in the neighborhood because they have their <laughs> they, TV. they have TV, they have uh, their own electricity inside. Wow! Um, this is the family very proud. This is the inside of the of the yurt, and they've got the wires coming down. Basically, that one generator powers everything inside the yurt. That's um, remarkable. Gives them three or four lights. Gives them the television. Gives them radio. They so, also in Bangladesh. Um, um, yes. Now that's not. I, I know Mongolia is very windy. Is Bangladesh right. pretty windy? Or there are regions of, of Bangladesh. The southern region is more windy. Uh -huh. um, this here is a, is a photo of a couple of officers, military personnel that were installing one of our products to actually operate a radio communicator because they're worried oh, so about they're, India sure. coming in and attacking them. So they put in these little installations around. Wow. So you find these products and use all types of applications, not just necessarily remote homes or anything like that. Right. You see them on offshore platforms, on top of mountains for doing telecommunications. Um, now, I've looked a little into solar for my own house mm -hmm. and uh, and wind too, because I'm have a I'm on a windy kind of ridge. Mm -hmm. And batteries are the big expense. Right. And, and that's is that's where the technology really needs some, makes that some progress, the, that's, right? Yes, that's what we call the Achilles heel is the yeah. batteries. Yes. And why is that? It's, well, it's, it's a, it's a te technology which just has not really advanced. We, d we developed You're this lead cell. still using lead acid yeah, batteries? Lead acid batteries, right. And like in the car. Just like in the car, Well, yes. even cars we don't right. even use. We've got new stuff coming <laughs> okay. out, nickel hydride right. and, and, right. Uh, and, and, and other technologies, but we've still got a ways to go. So they're heavy, they're expensive, they wear out uh, right. faster than this will wear out. That's correct, yes. Um, but, but you still need the battery array because you have to charge the battery so right. that you can draw, have a steady right. draw. Absolutely. Um, what is in the future? Uh, what's ahead for wind technology? Well, it's, as, as, as time goes on, more advanced materials are, are coming available, and that's allowing us to produce more and more powerful machines with smaller, in, in smaller packages and at lower cost. I think you'll see within just the next few years where a machine, oh, probably three times the size of this one, will power a, an individual's house and wow. for a price where... Uh, within a, a couple of years, it pays for itself. So well, and there are tax breaks. You should check with your state yep, because there's absolutely. huge tax breaks in most states. Yep, yep. There will be federal tax breaks in many cases. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so a lot of times this stuff is so subsidized that it doesn't cost nearly as much right. as you think. Right. I know from looking absolutely. into it. Yeah. We, I could get the state of California to pay for almost half of my solar That's uh, installation. Right. This is neat. This is yep. exciting. And uh, how noisy? These are actually very quiet. This one here, what it's doing it with the microprocessor, it's actually looking at RPM. We've, we've been able to actually program the uh, the uh, RPM, so it'll actually slow down or speed up. So you don't um, hear any whining so or it, humming? Very, very quiet, right. Oh, that's and great. And with the plastic blades, you never see any radio interference or anything like that with your television. There's about, we have about over 50,000 of these out in the market now. This is cool. Yeah. This is, what kind of life uh, expectancy? Um, design life is usually around 10 years before you have to rebuild it, which right. is basically just bearings. Right. And it'll go probably another, another 10 years. So. That's amazing. Yeah. Check out Andy's great article. He's written uh, uh, all about wind energy, how it works, and how it can change the world. It's already doing it in many places around the world. It's at thescreensavers.com, and there's this company, Southwest Wind Power, windenergy.com. Thank you, Andy. You bet. It's great to have you Thank in. You. I really appreciate it. Stay put, folks. Wade wants to stop his kids from downloading the Internet. Find out what he wants <laughs> in just a bit. And up next, we've got the most powerful video game systems you can get. We'll give you a much closer look. They look good, too, don't they, when the screensavers continue.
tips earlier this year. Call up all the boutique high-end gaming PC companies and ask them for their best system. Then take them all and benchmark them against the high-end Dell. Well, the Dell dropped out because basically... The not because they had any problems with their testing, but you know what? Because they're waiting a week to ship these systems, which are all based on the new 800 megahertz Canterwood, formerly codenamed Canterwood systems. You got it. We spent last week hours arguing over these systems. Tech TV Labs technical analyst Robert Heron led the charge on the benchmarks. He's here to fill in the details. Now, we should, should we identify each of these first? Well, it'd be pretty easy for at least one of them. <laughs> When you say Alienware, right? Which one would you think? <laughs> yeah, as we pull back the yeah the Alienware, the Alien head in there, and it looks Area like an HR Giger yeah, kind of definitely. monster. Definitely. I mean, they redesigned it simply because, in my opinion, they had to. Everyone was uh -huh. copying the Antec case design that pretty much everyone stole, and it's a very popular case right. in its own right. But this really does. When you say Alienware, this is definitely that's what it looks like. And the company is becoming known for custom painting. I don't know if you can see if as we turn this, it should shift color like that. It's like a house of color Ooh. chameleon paint. Falcon Northwest Mach. Yeah. which is coming in in a whopping, the Voodoo PC F class, which is coming in a whopping, I believe, is it $4,500? Uh, for this one, it's about 4500 bucks. It really depends bucks. on you know the drive options and things like that. Finally, over here... Ultra high-end. Ultra high-end. Literally, sorry, this is the, the Voodoo money, PC. Money, no object PC right there. Is it F class, they call it? The F class, the F550 from Voodoo. Now, the biggest thing about this is, is okay, case windows were a little bored by, but if you can see inside of there, it has the most neatly laid out cables in the history. They don't history. even use the rounded cables with Voodoo PC. They stick with the flat cables, and they fold them with a true origami specialist. Who it's incredible. Tucks them away, nicer, nicer than, you know, most definitely nicer than the room I put it in. So. Yeah, <laughs> one of the great. Without a doubt, though, all five, it's pretty much money is no object for the reason is that so anything you want in them. $3,000 for the yeah, Alienware. Roughly. How much for the Depending on the Falcon? paint and the internals and the guts of the system, mm -hmm. you can anywhere from 3000 on up. This particular okay. model is about $4,500, $4,600. And you're talking about $1,000 for the paint here, give or take. Pretty close to it. Actually, the you can get just about any graphic on, shot mm -hmm. on the outside of this for $400. Okay. So that's a $400 option just for painting alone. And the price on the... For that, the, for the case voodoo? itself, well, that, that comes in right at $5,000 as it sits right there for just the case. Wow. Now, here's the All fun right. part. Now, what, what, was the, what was the estimated price on the, on the Dell we're not allowed to show today? Oh, about $3,000. Okay. Right in there. So we got $3,000 to about $5,000 for each of these systems. Unreal Tournament 2003. Uh, every benchmark we threw at it. OpenGL Gaming, Direct3D Gaming with, like, mm -hmm. uh, 3D Mark um, or to, uh, uh, like you said, Unreal Tournament right. 2003, less than 2%. Right. Statistically insignificant. Yeah, but the margin of statistical insignificance, nothing you're ever going to feel. So basically, why is it? Are these are all using the same processor, motherboard, same memory, processor. and graphics card. Motherboard, amount of memory, type of memory, sound card. Mm -hmm. And in particular, with these three, they're using the exact same motherboard as well. So okay. in a sense, what you're paying for is a lot of extras in terms of what components do you want to put in there? Do you want the best DVD burner? Do you want two of them? Do you right. want the fastest hard drive in existence? Do you want ID, a couple of hard those? drives, yeah. serial ATA hard drives, serial ATA, serial ATA hard drives, and 10, thousand RPM ATA hard drives, things like that. Now, this th what's the biggest difference? We, you've obviously tested last in the last couple of weeks. You've also tested this particular three gigahertz processor versus the three point oh six gigahertz. The new processor running on an eight hundred megahertz front side bus, previously running at five thirty three. Big difference, small difference, Not insignificant really. difference. It, it, actually, the bottleneck's switching back to the video card again. We're okay. hitting a point where. At least in terms of ATI, which these all use ATIs, Radeon uh, 9800 Pro, the 128 meg card, they all seem to hit right about the same mark and stop. So uh -huh. maybe that's a, a new sign that the video cards need to kick it up a notch again to keep up with the latest and greatest in processors. Okay. But in general, hey, you know what? Whether you build your own or you buy the best, if you're using the same components, you're going to get the same benchmark scores, generally right. speaking. And what it comes down to, what really differentiates the differentiates these differentiates, excuse me, these computers from something you would build yourself mm -hmm. is. The, po the quality of the parts that go in for number right. one, how it's put together, and everything from how Windows is laid on top of that to the what applications would be running in the background when you first fire it up. How about service Very and clean. support? I mean, service obviously, these are stripped-down systems, right? There's no office on these systems. No, no office. And when you load it up next to the clock, there's not going to be a six or ten icons from various applications that had to be loaded on in order to get you the price. Yeah, you're getting the best you can get right there. And on top of it, when they ship it to you, uh -huh. It is ready to go, it is ready to be abused, and at the same time, it can be reset to its current condition in a matter of minutes. They provide you with huge amounts of documentation. Oh, of course, I, oh, here we go. When you buy a big system. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Watch as he comes back out of here. 
Let's see what you get here. Now, this is a sign that the service and support for these systems are going to be a little... I, I mean, yeah, you've, you've seen the you paper order manual. You buy a $5,000 PC. They give you the book in yeah. terms of I mean, every it's vital, bit of information. It's not leather, but this is, yeah, this is all of the information for this system. I mean, this is out of control. So are you getting better service and support? Do you get a special tech support line? or? Well, in the case of, say, Voodoo, you get what they call limited or lifetime upgrade insurance or assurance is actually right. how they put it. What that means basically is down the road if you ever want to change anything inside of it, they will take it back, they will sell you the parts at wholesale, they will upgrade right. it for you, re-image it, send it back to you, yada yada yada. You get a lot of great service features like that. You get people also that specialize in building gaming machines. They're mm -hmm. not here to build you the fastest office machine, right. not here to make sure that you know, uh, you're know you going to have the latest this and that. It's really how fast can we run the games? Will they run the latest games? Do I have all the latest features that I need? Okay, so like, in terms of that, you have a lot of style that goes into all of these systems too. Okay, let's see if I get this straight. First of all, primary difference between these is basically the look. Definitely. If you're willing to buy the, which motherboard are inside of these? Uh, the 875P. 875P motherboard, the Canterwood chip, uh, the three gigahertz, 800 megahertz chip, and the 9800. You're gonna get pretty much the same exact performance on these. Pretty much. If you build it yourself? Same thing. And you know what? It's we good. got a poll online. They're pretty. Or Look they're scary. Rescue, rescue DVD. This is so scary. <laughs> Thanks, Robert. Our distinguished lab rat, Robert Heron, Lawson Wong, thank you for running the benchmarks. You can find his full analysis, not to mention how he tested these systems. Plus, we want you to vote for which system you think looks the best. It's all coming. Well, you know what? Go to the screensavers.com. Do us a favor vote. We want to know what you think about these systems. Or if we should never show pretty systems again. They're delicious. Gives Don't go anywhere. Too. He's scary. You'll miss his deconstruct the Sunday tech ads. Deal or scam? We're going to reveal all. Plus, still to come, how do you keep sharing sites like Kazaa away from your kids? Find out right after these messages. Great savers. I'm Leo Laporte. Coming up in this half hour, don't get gypped. Who wrote that? You know that's considered a rude thing to say? Don't get screwed. Okay, that's better. Let us guide you to the hottest deals of the Sunday tech ads. Plus, design your own OS 10 icons with our next caller, Chris. No, no that's better because gypped, you know, gypsies take that uh, badly right. because it's from the word gypsy. But screws are inanimate, so they can't, they can't get mad. Yeah. Which of those three did you like? The green one? You I like the admit, DeSoto? I love the interior of the Voodoo. I'd like to see the, the Falcon with a different paint job. Yeah, the green is a little apple green for me. It's a, yeah, it's a little, it reminds me way too much of the Alien from Alien. Well, that's the whole point. It's alien wear. Drooling, it? acid, nasty, oh. human Ooh. civilization Ugh. ending kind of thing. And Robert's not so bad either. Don't forget to register for this week's Screensavers <laughs> Land Party powered by NVIDIA. We're going to be playing Quake 3 Akimbo. That's the two-fisted one. Yeah, a special mod that allows you to shoot, you see here, two weapons at the same time. Yes, you're right. Joshua Brentano thought this up. <laughs> a plasma cannon and a machine gun, any combo you want, or two, uh, two rocket guns, my favorite. <laughs> Go to our website, click on Join the Land Party to register, and uh, the download uh, software links are there as well. We Watches. see you. Leo goes Thursday. for a personal file. Yes. Fi personal, personal. You know what you don't want to do? Is get two rocket and then launchers and then go right up to a wall and shoot them at the same time. I was going to say, you're going to go for your, your personal, personal high of negative 23. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Just blow yourself to smithereens. Wade on the line from Glenville, California. Hello, Wade. Hello. Hello, Wade. <laughs> what can we do for you? Um, I've got a teenage son in a DSL line. Uh-oh. you got <laughs> trouble, my friend. Yeah. You probably want that uh, the, the porn thing. Well, he's pretty good at that, but yeah, I bet he, he ever is. once was. On but <laughs> we used to have to go to you know the drugstore and like right. if you were lucky, they would let you kind of look at the cover of the Playboy. Yeah, now, kids now. today, it's all there. Um, anyway, is there any way you can disable or block out peer to peer so oh. that he just can't download it he's, again? He's downloading music. Is that what he's doing? Um. Well, yeah, every once in a while I'll go in there and I'll delete everything, and right. it, it takes him a little while, and he how, can't help How it. old is your son, Wade? He's 16. Pretty sophisticated computer-wise? Uh, no. Oh, good. Because <laughs> I'll tell you, if he was, there's nothing you could do. Yeah, I, do, okay. does, does, does the child have a driver's license? Uh, that's what. That's the horror I'm going through right now. <laughs> okay. Here, here's what I'm saying. When I'm saying in in my house, if I continued to do something, my dad said no to. That's right. what you would lose. Yeah. yeah. If, at at best, that Let's, was a high point. I agree. Let's see if there's a technical solution. Is there any way you could prevent peer-to-peer -peer file sharing? 
A firewall would do it. Well, if you shut down the ports, if it's not designed to emulate port 80, which is what right. all of the HTML, if, if, it's, if it comes Does over Does Kazaa use 80? Do those use 80? That's a really good question. Do Nor you, so you understand where we're going here, Wade? Right. If, I've uh, got Norton Internet Security, and yeah. I, I tried enabling the parental controls, and it locked me out to the point <laughs> that I had to format the hard drive and start it over again. So I'm a little... You You're gun shy on that one. I don't blame you. Do you uh, have a, a hardware router, or do you only have uh, one computer connected to the it's, outside? I've got it's five static IP addresses. It's ah. run through a, a Cayman DSL right. router. Right, that's pretty sophisticated. You might look and see if that Cayman can do things like block the kinds of traffic you're worried about. That by doing it in the Cayman, you're kind of you're better off because that's he can't he can get into the computer and mess with it, but right. he can't really get into the Cayman. It's password protected. So you, that's a lot of times blocking at the router might be the solution. Did, well, that's what you I thought something? about blocking out a port, but I was wondering if, if it doesn't, if it just uses 80, well, then you're then out of you luck. Can't get anything. Yeah, you won't be able to surf the web, and, and it, that's the problem. Now, if this thing emulates 80, I don't know what you're going to do because you know you basically be there's nothing you can do. Uh, you can't prevent you uh, if it's Windows XP. You could have an account for him that doesn't allow him to install new software. You want to do that? XP Home. Okay, there you go. Here's what you do. You create an administrator account for yourself. You don't tell your son the, the password. You create an account for him, and you, and you don't make him an administrator. You make him an average user. He can't install new software. Then you remove all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. How about that, Wade? That'll work. That'll work. That's actually one of the best reasons to have user uh, permissions, right. keep, you from, keep people from doing stuff like that. That would be my recommendation. The thing is, if he's smart, you know, a smart 16-year-old who really knows about computers, uh, he's going to be able to get around anything you do. On the other hand, this yeah. is a really good way to train him how to use computers. Or you can simply <laughs> give him a good say. skill for the future, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, the flip side though is you you take that, then you add my version of social engineering on top of it, Between which the is two you of ground him for the next eight, nine, twelve months of his or her life. Right. Uh, <laughs> Why do you think Abby keeps asking me for the administrator password on her computer? Because she, she ain't gonna get it either. All right. But good call, Wade. and don't do what I did. Don't leave yourself logged in. Because then she got in and she changed herself back to administrator and changed me to an average user. So, <laughs> did you at least lock her up in her room? Administer any form no. of administrative you know, punishment? No, I'm scared of her. <laughs> Speaking of people, I'm scared of. Uh, let's check in with our web guru Nicole. It's her very first download of the day. It's not nice. I'm not You're scared not of you. scared of me. No. Well, I was scared of losing files, which is what prompted me to find today's download of the day. Tell me what happened. I was um, helping a friend who wanted to um, play around with partition magic. She was yeah. preparing to multi-boot Linux and yeah. Windows NT, and yeah. um, partition magic mutated, became evil, corrupted her partition data, <laughs> and um, she I didn't have laugh. a current backup. No, that's happened to me. No, this they, happens all the time. So you tell your friend that's completely normal. It's not her fault. That He's, makes me feel much better. It happened to you, didn't it? Was you? I know it. It was, it was me. It so was you. Okay. <laughs> so you lost all your data. I lost all of my partition data. Oh my goodness. And a number of files. I had a backup about a week old. Oh, so you wanted, there was a week worth of data that you didn't have. I didn't have it all. So what did you do? I went off in search of data recovery software. And you found it? I evaluated some options. What I decided to try was File Scavenger. It's from QTech Consulting, mm -hmm. and it's fantastic. Let's take a look. It's got a search button. It's very easy to interact with. You can see it's got a really friendly little user interface. That's nice. I can search for address books or music files. Any or, format yeah. file, any kind of file. And then this is what's really neat about this program. There are three search levels. You can do a normal search, which is a quick and easy recently created document. For those who have not partitioned their hard drive <laughs> inadvertently. Okay. Then there's an exhaust exhaustive search if you're mm -hmm. looking for something that you created a while ago or okay. if you've made some changes to your drive since okay. you um, had a backup. And then you have the defunct volume search. This this That's is what where all the have. power is. Yes, this searches for partitions you've lost, drives, even if it doesn't know the position number or size. Wow. So how did it do? Did it recover your data? I recovered everything. I didn't That's lose wonderful. a bite. So there's and how much does it cost? $39.95 for the full license. Okay. And there's a free demo you can download. It will find everything, but it will only restore little bitty files. Well, that's good because you can see if it works. Yes. You can see if it's going to find your data. And then if it does, hey, it's worth the 30 what is it, thirty nine ninety five? Thirty nine ninety nine. It's worth it, it's worth it yeah. definitely. File scavenger, links on our website. Right? Links on our website. I've got an article there, and if you have any other fun free downloads, send them to me, Nicole C at TechTV.com. All right. Very cool. You ever see those uh, beautiful icons in OS 10? They're so gorgeous. Have you ever wondered how you can make them for yourself? I'm gonna show you. It's not as hard as you might think as the screen savers continues. But next, here's just one of many ads that caught our eye in the Sunday papers. We'll take a closer look at the real deal when the screen savers continue.
It's time to check in with the great people at Tech Live. They're preparing a wonderful show for you tonight. News anchor Lindsay Arendt is on the Tech Live set. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, guys. How you doing? Great. What Good. you got for us today? Norton, I got a question for you. I want Norton. to know what your thoughts are on laundry. You like doing it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, come on. on. I do. do really? You? My mother and I used to fight over doing the laundry. Oh, that's so Soothing. cute. Wait, wait, wait you're, you're not like going with this clothes. here. I want you to say no. You hate it all the I'll, time. Lindsay? Lindsay? Yeah? I hate doing the laundry. Thank you, Leo. Thank you true. so much. Because I need some help with this. Listen, we're talking about Rosie the Robot. Do you guys remember that lady from the Jetsons? Yeah. yeah. French parlor maid outfit, robot lady, did everything yeah. you ever wanted. All right. Well, if you're like me, for years you've been waiting for a Jetsons-like robot like Rosie to come on the market, do everything in life that you hate doing. For me, definitely laundry. Well, sad news is the wait continues, but little did you know that every time you stick a slice of bread in the toaster, slap a dish in the microwave or in the oven, you're actually commanding a robot, just like the one you saw, kind of, but not really. Fact is, whether you know it or not, robots are all around you in your kitchen. They're in your life. We are going to take a look at all the robots in your home tonight on Tech Live, right after the screensavers. So you'll have to watch and wait and cool. see what's in your home that you don't know about. Thank you, Lindsay. You're welcome. That's amazing. Wow. That's uh, Tech Live tonight. Right after the screensaver. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Time now for... Our take on the latest tech ads. The Sunday ads. We call it the real deal. The real deal. This is weird. Check this out. Parasound Halo introduces true audio file sound to multi-channel home theater. Oh, it's $4,000. It must be good. Yeah, well, actually, it. it's $10,000 because you basically need both of them to do all the cool stuff. Okay. You know what's weird about this? What? This is high-end gear. This is audio file level gear. You used to have to go to a little tiny store, usually run by a really obnoxious person who didn't want to deal with anybody I know. wearing. I know. I used to love going they to high-end audio stores, yes. especially when I was like freelancing, and I'd right. walk in, I'd look like scum, and they right. wouldn't talk to me, and then I'd pay cash, and then every time I'd go in there ever they again, to you. everybody would fight because they all wanted the commission. So this is actually good stuff. This is pretty serious stuff. This is high-end stuff. This it's is expensive. Highly rated. It's interesting though to see. Really, this is you know this is ten thousand dollars worth. Of, this is a used car. Right. This is without the speakers. Right. This is without the screen. You already dropped a used car. And this is like in the Sunday papers. This is in the Sunday paper. This is wow. apparently showing up. I guess at, at Good Guys. Wow. So it's interesting to see that some very expensive, very high-end stuff is starting to get in now to the superstores and the regional. Do they have stores. the skill set to sell this stuff? Well, you know what? Do they have the skill set to sell anything? <laughs> now, wait a minute. Some of my best friends work at the good guys. And I know some great people. I know some great people who work at CompUSA. I know but some great is, people who work at Best Buy Circuit City. Stuff. But I also know people, I know people who can mess up at any end of it. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? And all it takes is one detailer for a company to offer a pretty good spiff. And you know what? Suddenly they're pushing right. Bob's brand of whatever right. it is. What, what else the we best got? One or not. Okay, next one. Harris Sound Halo. Now, we got this another is thing. great. I told Megan to go run out and buy one of these Canons. Yeah, a Canon zero six five. Some low light issues, but overall a very nice camera. A lot of great features for the money. Six hundred dollars sounds amazing, right? That yes. one of their ZR sixty five. Well, check it out. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch to a web page here, so I'm gonna pull the camera back. Otherwise, people get all sorts of. Ugh. Check this out. Prices. Let's go to prices. We do a search here. CNET's got a great price search engine. Check this out as we scroll down. Four hundred twenty-six. Four hundred twenty-six. Four hundred thirty-two. Yeah. Willoughby's an outstanding yeah. dealer. So shop around. Shop around. Why that's pay an extra hundred eighty dollars? That they're charging right there. It is list that they're yeah. charging right yeah. there. So that's a good point. Don't Consumer electronics yeah. you can often get for less than list. Just because it's in the Sunday flyer, don't assume it's the best deal you can get. Listen to this man. He knows. I'm cheap. That's what I am. Head over to the screensavers.com and click on the show notes. See the ads we looked at along with our witty and charming Wouldn't it be commentary. nice to me if I paid cash? I got 57 cents. Hey, it's a start. I'll After pay the cash. break, we'll show Chris how to make those fancy OS 10 icons. Yes. Or at least we're going to die trying mm -hmm. when the screensavers continue. Could this be fatal? Could be. Oh, my God. <laughs> Fighting over. It's what a little fuzzy over? kitty, I think. Are you fighting over pictures of the kitty cat? I don't know whose cat this is, but it is easily the ugliest cat I have ever <laughs> laid on. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's an all insults edition yeah. of the screensavers. Up next to be abused, Chris. Hey, Chris from, from Farwell, Farwell Michigan. Michigan. How you doing? Pretty good. How are you? You don't work at the good guys, do you? Huh? Nothing. What can we do for hey, you? you know, hold, hold on a second. I got to say that. Look, we've all shopped retail. 
Yes. We've all had good many experiences. Many of us have worked retail. And myself, I've spent yes. many years in retail. There's people who know their products, there's people who don't. There's also an unfortunate zone in the middle where people just want to sell stuff and get you out of their store. <laughs> if I've insulted anyone that works at any of these stores, please do not hurl heavy objects in the aisles at me. Explain to me that you know your stuff and yes. that I'm a jerk. And, and I'm going to stay that. away from all gypsy encampments. Now, Chris, what can we do for you? But screws are okay. Yeah, uh, I just want to say congratulations to Megan on her baby. Yeah! I will, I'm going to see her tonight. We, I had uh, dinner with her yesterday, and I held the baby, and she's so sweet. Yeah. So I will tell I'm going to see her tonight. She needs a firewire cable. They have a video camera. It didn't come with the firewire cable. So I'm going to bring her a firewire cable so she can get some videos of the baby into the computer. How so I'll tell her that? that for you, Chris. All right, and uh, I love your book, Leo. Oh, thank you. And my dad loves it, too, because I got it for him for Christmas. Oh, that's really yeah, sweet. Nice. It's ironic that you should say that. We're just negotiating what we're going to do next, and I'll, I'll let you know as soon as we uh, decide. Mm -hmm. Cool. But we'll, we'll probably do another one for the fall. Now cool. that you've complimented us, Chris, can we help you in any way? <laughs> yeah, <minute>? really. <laughs> what can we do for you? Um, I'm wondering, uh, I switched over to Mac, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. And um, I love the icons. Aren't I love they the beautiful? Way that they make the icons. Let me show you what, what he's talking about. They really are pretty. They are. Um, they're doing something called photorealism. Um, it, that's one thing. And then they're also, in fact, let me, you know what I'll do is open the. Uh, Oh, we're in the we're in the lollipop mode. Sometimes that happens when it's just waking up. You ever be that way when you're just waking up, Chris? You know, you just kind of nothing's gonna happen for a while. You just kind of there we go. They're they're very they really are beautiful icons. So what would you would you like to know how to make them? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Yeah. One of the reasons that these icons look so good is because they um, Apple is using alpha channels, which is the transparency mm -hmm. channel. So you get red, green, blue, and then an alpha channel, a background channel, which allows you to do a lot of lighting effects. Let me show, point you, we don't have a whole lot of time, so I can't actually show you all the details, but let me point you to a website, xicons.com, which is a great Mac icon resource, and they have an article on how to make aqua icons. Mm. So let me, let me uh, xicons. Oh, man. Oh, man. It's hard having two keyboards and two mouses. Mises. Mises. I can't click as fast as I'd like to. This is xicons.com. Go to articles. And then scroll down, and they actually tell you. Do you have Photoshop or anything like that? Um, I have a tryout version of Photoshop. Good. That's Photoshop's the best way to do. It. You need some paint program that does alpha channels. Uh, Photoshop, of course, is famous for that. But this actually has a step-by-step. -step. It's kind of for an older version of Photoshop, so you might have to modify some of the steps. But look at here's how you take a basically a gray circle, you apply lighting gradients and lighting effects, and look at that with proper lighting. That look how that looks. And you can't do that without an alpha channel. By the way, Windows XP also supports alpha channel and uh, 128 uh, 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 by 128 icons. And that's kind of the other thing is large icons, high color. Look how beautiful you can get that with all the lighting effects. This is a really nice little article to get you through that step by step. Okay, thanks for the call, Chris. There we are. Final emails and final thoughts right after this. <laughs>